Hello, this is here and welcome to another video. Today we're doing another video inside of Hermitcraft Seething Clockwork. And yeah, we should get right into it, shall we? We are going into Story 13, which is Perspective of Gem, Gem which is episode 50. Uh, we should probably get right into it, shall we? You already know. It's up. Things have happened. Spoilers. Fun stuff. This is the first one that you're watching. Just be aware there's probably going to be stuff that you don't know or understand. It's just... It's okay. It's okay. There's a lot of these chapters. A lot of these stories. And it's a lot to get through. This is bigger than the Clockwork Chronicles books. Chapter 1. Jem looked down at the trees below as she glided above them. Following Liam as they soared into, soared to where Grian's base would be. It had been shortly after discussing the situation with Tango, learning of the potential danger her friends were in. She didn't necessarily like the idea of some men wanting to threaten her friends. So far, at least, she had there hadn't been too many incidents that they couldn't handle. Hopefully, it would stay that way. Besides, she knew that she would that, that they would be fine since. Even Liam was, if Liam was right, he'd know what they were dealing with. He was being cautious, and she was completely fine with that. She could see her friend's base up ahead, watching as her as the boy dipped down a little shakily before landing on his feet on the damp ground as she followed him, being followed shortly behind by Messias, who had been following them throughout their journey. Journey. It's a lot of following. <laughs> That was a pretty good landing, she said encouragingly to the boy. Liam smiled and nodded. It's getting there. We should probably make our presence known, besides replied as he nodded toward the door. Jem nodded in return as she trotted over to the door of the base and knocked, seeing it open a few moments later by Green's new escort. Why, hello there. Hi, Jem said cheerfully. Is Green here? We need to talk to him. Kind of urgent. Yeah. The escort nodded as he stepped aside as she just screams at peeking out from around the corner in the main room. Okay, she said quickly as she quickly rushed into the room. Am I not supposed to be? Green asked curiously, raising an eyebrow. No, it's fine, it's just... She had a date that's the point her escort walked in. Things are happening and it might involve some things with your people you know. Hmm. Green replied thoughtfully as they looked back into the main room before gesturing them to follow him. Why don't you all have a seat? A little discussion, wouldn't it? Jim followed her friend into the main room, and she found herself a seat as Liam began to explain to her friend the situation and his theory on who the man who had been attacking her friends were. He still hadn't given a name, which Grian seemed to understand as he nodded as the boy gave him everything he needed to know as Jim waited. So what are we going to do about it now? Green asked after Liam was finished. I'm going to see if we can hire extra security for you and the others that the man has had interactions with before. Liam replied matter-of-factly. And I'd expect you to keep a close contact with your friends, just in case. Green smiled and glanced over at Jim. Yes, of course I will. Great! Jim said excitedly as she looked between the two of them eagerly. Have you seen anything weird up until now, Graham? Liam asked curiously as he got to his feet. Not yet. And I will keep you composed. Oh, yeah. I will keep you posted if, it, if anything seems off. Anyway, Green assured him. Though if the man doesn't want to be seen, I wouldn't really see him. Now would I? Fair point, the boy admitted. Just be on your guard. He won't see it coming if he even tried it. Green said it was a mischievous smile. Trust me. Alright, they replied as he looked over at Jim. I'll set up a few things here if you and Matthias want to return home and prepare for any mishaps. Do you think the man might come for me? Jim asked wearily. Liam shrugged casually. It's better to be safe than sorry. It'd also be good in case you get a surprise visit from a friend. Right. Jim agreed as she looked over at her friend. You'll be okay here? I should be fine, Green said with a smile. Made the dug out his computer gear. As long as help is close to hand. Good. She sighed as she glanced back over at the boy, who nodded encouragingly as the boy looked over at Green. Their eyes meeting for a moment as Jim wondered if the two of them knew more about what was going on than either was letting on. 
So long as her friend was safe, though, she didn't mind so much as she went to the door, opening it and closing it as she spotted Matthias nearby. We need to get home. I'm assuming Pearl should be coming home soon, Jem told him matter-of-factly. Lead the way. I'll be right behind you. The man reported with a nod. She smiled, taking out a rocket as she jumped, launching herself into the sky as she soared high above the trees. What's the point? Chapter 2. <laughs> it had been several days since she'd returned home from her friend's place. Relieved to find that Beatrice had finally woken up and was recovering well from what he'd gone through, Tango and Impulse had stayed with him for the time being. One, to keep him company as well as to stick together in case the man should strike them again. It had been very quiet for Mr. A's men during the three deep days. There had barely been any sightings or any idea of where the men were or what they were doing. The only thing they could be sure of was that they hadn't left them alone. They weren't hi they were hiding out there somewhere, waiting for something. She wasn't sure what they were waiting for, though. She finished resetting some of the redstone systems that had been set up for her by Tango when she'd requested an alarm system to try to help her friend when he needed it. It wasn't too difficult, to be fair. And again, it probably would be better if it wasn't as easy to reset like that, but right now she couldn't be bothered to ask for an upgrade. Besides, her friends were busy, and they assigned themselves some pretty important jobs. She could wait a little longer. The system still worked flawlessly. And that was what mattered. She closed the back up the back closed back up the wall that led out to the redstone system, returning into the main room as she looked around it calmly, not expecting much apart from the furniture and the light pouring in from the window. She could see the green of the leaves starting to stretch up into the sky in the distance as a few flowers began to spring up from the ground, looking up wondrously at the sun shining gloriously down at them. Pinks, yellows and blues, with a little dash of purple. The clear blue sky only had a few clouds dotted throughout. The stillness of the world through the window made it almost like a painting. A snapshot of a peaceful moment. A beautiful moment. A part of her wanted to go out there and take a part in, take part in it. And she knew it would probably be safer if she stayed inside. Especially when she didn't know where the men were or if they were even here. She spent another couple hours rummaging through any stuff. Having organized most of it, wondering if she should do what she do next. Maybe she, Tango, and Beatups could start work on the system they had been planning to do earlier before Beatups had been attacked by the men, the man. It's been a while since they'd done more with the idea, that idea, even though Beatups no longer was sick with the rest of the bug. It didn't mean they couldn't still do it. Of course, if they had time, it wouldn't hurt to ask. Impulse could even join in, too, if he wanted to. She didn't mind that. She reached into her pocket as her thoughts jumped from place to place as she pulled out the communicator, looking down at it quickly, quietly scanning it, not seeing any signs of, it, of an issue going on as she pressed a few buttons. Device connecting, connecting as she was greeted by a familiar voice. Hello? Tango asked through the speaker of the little gadget she held in her hand. Hey, Tango. How are things going over there? She questioned curiously. Pretty well, nature replied matter-of-factly. How about you? Haven't heard from you in a little bit. It hasn't been that long, she chuckled, as she glanced over at the window as she walked into the hallway, no longer being able to see the window as she leaned casually against the wall. How do you three feel about working on that system we spoke about a week or so ago? Sting for beat-ups? Tango replied softly. It doesn't have to be anymore, does it? She pressed. I suppose not, Tango <laughs> chuckled. It's going to require a lot of iron, wood, and gold. I'm sure that's not hard to come by, she said simply, brushing it off. Right. Tango replied. When should we meet to get started? Where should we meet to get started? It can meet through the tunnel system to where you guys are at now, she offered. That way you don't have to go far. I need to go back to my place to get a few shulker boxes of iron. Tango said, Goblin. Do you have a few shulker boxes of iron? She asked critically. Oh, I have far more than a few shulker boxes of iron. <laughs> the man laughed. You should be good. <laughs> Great. We'll see you three at the end of the hour. Sounds good? She suggested. See you there, Tango replied. A moment of silence between them before they wished the others well. As the connection was cut, she quietly put the device back into her pocket and went over to her storage room to grab whatever materials that she felt they would need. 
for this project. Sure, they were e they could easily do the same with their wings, but she supposed a little bit of aesthetic wouldn't hurt anyone. The day passed faster as she re then she realized as she climbed the stairs back up to the door that led down to the secret room and the tunnel she had just come from. It had been a great couple hours hanging out with her friends. They had been great. They had our great made great work already on the hallway, railway system, chatting about things and future plans, such as future plans, what was going on at the time, and what was going on at the time. She couldn't remember much of what they talked about. Only that she had a little blast, and maybe that her mouth hurt a little. <laughs> so much. She stopped, stepped into the hallway, and she heard a distant rumble of thunder through the walls. She looked out the window, noticing that dark. Gloomy clouds were starting to roll in. The storm was coming. She watched as a flash of light filled the window, quickly fading as she blinked, hearing the roll of thunder rumble through the earth below. It's good that we don't need to go out there tonight. The storm looks pretty bad. Inside, it said from behind her as she he put a hand on her shoulder. She nodded as she turned away from the window and went over to the stair stairs, seeing another flash of light as the thunder rumbled once more. She tried not to think about it too much. As she took out the device for one moment, she placed a hand on the railing. She found, as she looked down at it, the screen appeared to be slightly distorted and glitchy. The lights around the icons of the hermits flickered slightly. All of them still a solid green. No distress signals, no emergencies. Not yet. She put the device into her pocket as she ran up the stairs, reaching the top of the floor as the floor rumbled again. As she shook her head, hearing the faint sounds of rain pattering on the roof. Pretty soon it'd be a downpour. She walked over to her room and opened the door, looking over her shoulder to see the hallway empty. Besides, probably had stayed on the first floor to ask out the area in the safety of the base. She sighed as she walked into her room and closed the door. Looking out the dreary dark night, at, into the dreary dark night, she hadn't heard from her all yet, saying, that she was coming home, so at least she knew that her friend most likely wouldn't be traveling out in this weather. Still, she wanted her friend to come back home soon. There was only so much she could do to distract herself or hang out with other her their other hermits. All she knew was that her friend was safe and coming home soon. She smiled as she went over to the window and pulled the blinds over to cover the window. Hearing the rain pummel the glass as she went over to her bed and pulled back the covers taking out the communicator one last time as she looked at it before putting it on the nice tin right by the be her bed as she crawled in and sheltered herself with the blankets, soon falling asleep to the rhythmic sounds of rain and the rumble of thunder in the distance. <laughs> ah, my nose is a bit tickly. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one, whatever that might be. Goodbye.